Hey guys, welcome back to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Life on the farm changes, and I know I've said that a million times because every day seems to be just a little bit different. Well, today I want to share with you a little bit about what happens on the farm on a day to day basis. Things sometimes are planned, things sometimes are not. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you to go down below and find the subscribe button along with the little bell. You're going to want to click those so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos because I'm constantly posting things that happen here on the farm. A lot of times it does involve my garden, but it is the summer and sometimes in the summer, I don't know which way I'm going, up or down, east or west, life really gets busy and things tend to take over. So for the moment, garden is it. Canning, preserving, life on the farm really involves the garden. However, there are other things that happen here on the farm that you probably saw in the last video, but also I wanted to share just some stuff with you um, that happens here sometimes on a daily basis, which is why things take a little bit longer to get done here on the farm. Many of you know that we have a lot of animals here on the farm, but we have a lot of birds. So I have lots of chickens and soon there will be an additional 15 coming. But we do have a guinea family that we've had for about two years now. That guinea family has been reproducing so much. We would have thousands of guineas here on the farm if it wasn't for me being able to sell them and get rid of some of them. And also so that we have an integration in the flock and they're not all coming in brother and sister and uncle and aunt and you get the gist. So I have a, a set of about 12 that I am actually getting ready to um, transfer off the farm. But today on my excursion to a local uh, ranch and farm store, I was picking up chicken feed and I happened to hear that all familiar peep, 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 peep. Yeah, had to go look at them. It's like a calling card for me. So I go look and of course, they had guineas, and those guineas were brown and white. So today we added six new guineas to our flock, three white, three brown. The brown are pretty prominent. You can kind of tell which ones are which here. But then we do have three white ones in here um, that will be added to our flock so that we can actually integrate them into our lavender flock. The lavenders are beautiful, and they really have been very good at staying alive here on the farm but the white and brown ones have been hard to find because of all of the well for lack of a better word mess that's been happening here in our country but also just to keep them alive has been difficult so i'm very excited that we will have three white and three brown new guineas added to our flock probably sometime in september for now these beautiful little guys they're gonna hang out with me here in the house in a cute little brooding box oh my gosh he's so cute they're so cute when they're babies so our tomatoes are in full swing in the garden guys I mean full swing I am getting ready to can them and make diced tomatoes. This is my pressure cooker pot and here are my diced tomatoes. This tends to happen a lot in the summertime. There will always be preserved food on the counter. And of course I go to the chicken coop multiple times throughout my day, um, bringing them feed and leftover scraps and always making sure that they have enough water. Yesterday I had to go buy chicken food and scratch food, so here I am actually just taking this down to the coop because we keep this down in a pelican box back behind the actual chicken coop for easy access. I love just watching them walk around the yard. I get to come see my beautiful ladies as they enjoy all of the treats that were left for them. And then I get to head into the coop and I pick up all of the treasures 
from my work. One of the greatest things I love about coming out here into the coop is that it's actually very shaded in here and it's not hot as much as it is outside where it's 100 degrees out. And the other reason I love wearing my new apron, if y'all haven't seen that video, make sure you check that out. It's a pinafore apron that I got from Farmhouse on Boone and I'll leave her link down below. But I love the pockets in it because when I find treasures, it's very easy to just stick them in my pocket and then head back out the door. Of course, one of the other things I get to do while I'm down here is clean out this coop. If you haven't seen our video of Meet the Flock, you might want to check that out. That link is in the description down below. And although the chickens have water out in the yard, I always like to give them a little bit of extra because it is 103 degrees here right now. So in here, the water stays cooler. By the time I get down here, the water is half in the bucket or half in the wagon and then half in the filler. And then I come over and I actually fill, <laughs> I actually fill our other bucket right here, which needs to be refilled. So that is a self waterer. They get water just by pushing on those cool little yellow pieces in there. My husband built this for us out of just a regular, um, if you can read it, it actually says chlorine tabs, but we have washed it out a million times so it is totally clean. And my girls seem to like it, so. Don't you just love her little hair up there? <laughs> Having chickens is an all day, every day thing. And although it is a little bit of work, they really have become the easiest animals to maintain here on the farm. And I'm absolutely thrilled that we have fresh eggs every single day. I get between eight and 10 every day from my 13 birds. And they just are like little pets to me. This here's Juliet, she's my original. She was my original little chick. She was about this. Every time I come out to the chickens, I do try to stop at the cut flower garden and also our raised beds because something is always growing and changing. Everything is thriving here. The last few days we have had massive storms that have come through and actually have pushed down all of my tomato bushes. If you've noticed, if you notice over here, they're all kind of laying down. The ones in the center here are laying down. They are kind of bent in one area by the base, but I've kind of propped them up as good as I could, even though they were already propped up. And they are still producing and they seem to still be okay for now. I will just keep an eye on them. And if they do look like they're starting to die, I will be pulling all of the green tomatoes off and sitting them in my windowsill as you saw earlier. One of the crazy things about that is that these tomatoes were actually, they were totally held up really strong and firm. But when you have thunderstorms come in the middle of the night that have a 50 plus mile an hour gust of wind, it's almost impossible to keep them standing up unless you put like cattle panels or some type of panel where that they are actually trellised and held onto there. Next year we might be considering that for this particular area else I always do when I come outside is I come to the raised beds because I'm never really sure exactly what is growing and what needs to be picked. So today I'm going to just kind of root through here real quick and see what's able to be picked and brought in and preserved. So our onions are just about through. I've been pulling them here and there when I see them bent like this because once they bend they will not be getting any more nutrition from their root. 
or from the tops. So I just lay, I let them sit here for a couple hours and then come out and put them in a spot that is cool but shaded and aerated like on top of a pallet or on top of a netting. As you see, most of our onions are already out of this bed. One of the things that happens in the summer, it's a constant repeat of a schedule. Plant seeds, watch them grow, wait till they're ready to be harvested, harvest them, preserve them, come out and work the soil, and replant and wait for your next harvest. It is a constant cycle throughout the year, but more so in the summer because things are constantly dying like this that need to be replaced. I do have tomatoes out here, and then I have new tomatoes out here. This is one of the yellow pear tomatoes, one of the ones that is actually broken down in my cut flower garden. I took a clone from it. As you may remember, you might be able to go back and find the video. Um, if you actually break one of these little pieces in between and place it into water, they call these suckers. Um, if you put that in a thing of water, you can actually make a clone and grow more tomato plant. I have dill here. Again, it all died. We harvested, just planted seed a couple days ago. And as I said, it is a constant grow, harvest, die, replant. Garlic, Roma tomatoes. This is our butternut squash or also called winter squash. We have it trellising up here um, so that it will make an actual shaded arbor. But guys, look how beautiful this winter squash is starting. I'm so very excited about that. Over here we have parsnips still growing. I've planted more potatoes. That's a remnant of the storm last night. <laughs> Cucumbers up here. Peppers. And guys, you know how these peppers have been for me this year. It's been unreal. But I'm actually... I don't know if you can see it on this side. Let me go to the other side so that you can see. This is mostly habanero, serrano, and my purple bell peppers. But yesterday I spotted color. I can't wait to put that in a dish and make it spicy. Now that everything out in the gardens are okay and the chickens are fed, I actually am heading up to the house to take care of house things. Because, you know, the family still wants to eat. The floors are still totally dirty. Clothes need to be folded. Beds need to be washed. Clothes need to be washed and folded. It's just a non-ending cycle of me fitting everything in. The other thing about that is that we are a homeschool family. We homeschool year round. So I also am a teacher. So we do have to do school in between these periods of doing things outside. It becomes hard at times, but it's one of the best things we've ever done for our family. So preservation happens in a lot of different ways. Of course we can, but we also freeze. I also have our onions here, which I actually have watched a tutorial on how to braid them. And although it's not the greatest braid ever, I was able to actually braid them. So once a week I need to make bread for our family. So I pull the sourdough starter out of our fridge and I usually mix it up. This starter has been so amazing the last few times that I have made bread. I do make our bread in a bread maker. I would love to tag it below, but I've had this bread maker about 26 or 27 years now, so I'm sure there's better ones on the market. But I just put all of these ingredients in here and then I just turn it on. I actually have a video, which I again will link below, where I actually made sourdough bread and I showed you how I did it. After the bread starts, I will always refeed my sourdough starter. I am a one for one person. One cup of water, one cup of flour. If I take out two cups of water or two cups of starter, I will put in two cups of flour and water, put the cover back on it after mixing, put it back in the fridge until the next time I need to use it. And of course, we need to eat lunch, homemade mac and cheese. Y'all ever heard the stories of grandparents and aunts and uncles and uh, sisters and siblings and cousins sitting on the porch rocking for hours snapping beans well when you own your own garden and you have things like pinto beans or green beans or peas that need to be shelled 
and taken out of their little protective covers. That is actually where this phrase comes from because it really was a true thing that people did back in the day. We planted pinto beans this year and they were really easy because they are not like put them in the ground and go but then you have to actually shuck them. So I sat on the back porch for a little while and actually did clean all out the rest of our pinto beans. They are so beautiful. I do not know if I will ever buy store-bought beans again. I was coming in to unplug this because I thought all of the other birds were done hatching. I didn't think I had any more guineas. And when I opened it, I found that. And he's moving. Come on, little birdie. And our bread is done. Pulled it out of the oven. I like to put a little bit of melted butter on top and then slice it and put it away for when we make sandwiches. We did have a little bit of a swim and then I came over here and actually planted some flowers. I've got some pink jasmine that we hope to vine across this fence. And I got this bucket. I um, can't even remember where I got it from, to be honest with you. I want to say a local feed store. Um, but I planted a butterfly bush in there as well. And we still haven't done window boxes here, which that is my hope is one day to have window boxes here. But until then, we have these beautiful flowers in here growing. This one's not doing as well as this one. It's just multicolored geraniums, different colors of geraniums, and then these beautiful phlox. It's about 6.15 at night here. Kids are eating dinner and I just got finished half of dinner and decided I probably should go check the chickens because I haven't been out for a couple hours and um, just check on eggs and see how they're doing, make sure they have water. It's been 103 today, it's been really warm and that always worries me when it's really hot. Everybody seems to be doing well. Wings are out because we're all sweating. And then there is my broody hen. I don't know what to do about this poor girl. She's been broody for about a month now. She's kind of sweet. I can still go in there and touch her, but I keep wanting to tell her, sweet girl, you will never have babies because we do not have a rooster. Five eggs this evening, guys. That would be eight today, which is what I love. And they're all so different. I love the speckles and I love the colors that they give me. I've also been working on another project all day long. So this project needed some topsoil from our pile. Of course, it's hard as could be because we haven't had a lot of rain and it's totally being overgrown with weeds. But just a little digging and I got just enough to fill the item that I needed so that I could put the nice soil on top of this. It helps to kind of fill in the pots. My goal is to use these to plant some more beans before the end of the season. If I plant them today, they'll actually be ready around the 10th to the 15th of September is when harvesting time would be, which is plenty of time here in central Oklahoma because it is so stinking hot. I had found these at Aldi of all places. They were a set of three for $12.99. I had found these on another bigger website. It was a set of five and they were over a hundred dollars. Guys, I consider this one of my best finds for gardening. So how they work is you actually will fill water in the top once it's full and that will water, the water will actually trickle down through the center and actually water everything all at the same time, which is really phenomenal. So right now on the bottom there is some manure. I'm going to put a little bit of topsoil which you just saw me digging and I put it into my beautiful gorilla cart, which I got on Amazon and I'll link that below. And then I will go ahead and plant beans and it will be six high. I will put it right there where that base is. This is my base. And then I will stack them up here so that I can have beans right here on the back porch.
after I put topsoil, I did put a little bit of nor, and then I put our nice soil on top of it and just stacked these uh, one on top of the other. They do have a spot where you can actually hold, where they hold together, and I absolutely love them. Now here I'm actually planting purple TP beans and also Kalima beans. The Kalima beans are just a regular green bean, but they're really long. And then the purple TP beans are like a purple green bean. Y'all, make sure you label everything you plant. Here I just used dollar store popsicle sticks and I wrote on there what was in each tub. I know, I always forget what I've planted. And here it is, quarter to nine at night. And I am just going down to the blackberry bushes. This is like a normal day for us. It is always busy. I am always going and I don't stop until about 10 and then once I hit the pillow I am gone I sleep I sleep hard but I think it's because we do work on a farm and farm work is hard and it's a big misconception people nowadays are very quick to say I want a homestead I want to do this and I don't think a lot of people realize just how much work goes into owning your own homestead and how much work it takes to preserve a lot of your own food. So, thanks for being here all day today, guys. I probably look a little rough. Let me look at myself. <laughs> I probably look a little rough because it's been a very long day and I have been able to accomplish a lot and I'm so grateful that you are part of my channel here with me. Thank you guys so much for being here and we will catch you next time. God bless. Bye, guys. Bedtime for the ladies.